The shop vac is a great tool to clean out your pellet grills as well as your Kamados. But there's one thing that people don't tell you when they recommend you use your shop vac, and that is it's going to start smelling like smoke and you're going to clog the filter really fast. And I've got a solution for you. And actually, I got this idea from Tom Horseman on YouTube, which is an excellent channel. He loves to talk about barbecue, cooking, as well as tools. And so if you can't decide which one of those you like best, check out his channel and I'm sure you'll love it. He had a dust collector down in his basement when he was doing woodworking. And I thought that we could apply that to using it out on the grill instead. And we're going to make one from scratch. I'm going to show you how to do it. To start off, you're going to need a standard five gallon bucket. And it doesn't have to be new. So if you're debating between the blue hardware store and the orange one, consider the bucket lids. The blue one is flexible and will bend under the pressure of the vacuum, which is why I suggest the orange one. All the PVC parts are one and a half inch. You're going to need three 90 degree elbows, a coupler, and some PVC pipe. Now you don't need much, and you might be able to find the scraps at the ReStore. I'm using a two inch hole saw that you can find at the hardware store, but I've linked to one if you can't. The first hole goes right in the center of the lid. The second goes right on the edge where the lid meets the bucket wall. Then check your hole size with the PVC pipe and there should be a little bit of wiggle room as you put it in. Cut two sections of PVC pipe that are about as long as the coupler. And hopefully your hacksaw is a little bit sharper than mine. For all the connections I'm using PVC glue but that's really overkill for this. Super glue would work just as well if that's all you have. Insert a section of PVC pipe into the elbow and twist it as you push it in. This piece is going to go on the bottom of the bucket lid with the opening facing towards the side of the bucket so that way the ash spins around the outside of the bucket and away from the part attached to the shop vac. The second 90 degree elbow will go on top of the bucket and face out. The next step is to set up the part that connects to the shop vac. You'll need the second section of PVC pipe that you cut earlier. Insert the pipe into the coupler and then into the 90 degree elbow that will go on the other end of the pipe. That's how the pieces will go together with the bucket lid in between. Now we need to glue it all together to make it permanent. The coupler end goes on the bottom of the bucket lid and the 90 degree elbow will go on top. The coupler will give it a little bit more strength and keeps it from being pulled out. At this point it spins around but you'll want to orient it so that way it points in the opposite direction of the other elbow which will make it harder to tip over. I had some extra silicone around and I used it to seal the PVC to the bucket lid so we don't end up with any air leaks. And you're going to repeat the process for the other pipe and this will help lock them in place. I let it sit overnight just to make sure it was fully cured and the pieces were solidly in place. But just to be sure I flipped it over and I put silicone on the underside as well. Now the shop vac hoses won't fit perfectly with a one and a half inch PVC but you can seal it up with a couple of rubber bands or a bit from an old bike tube. The hose that connects to the shop vac will connect to the center pipe. For the intake hose, I used a one and a half inch to one and a quarter inch rubber reducer. It ended up not being the best choice for reasons I'll show you later, but it fit perfectly in the big end of the hose and inside the PVC elbow. Just one voice of warning, if your life is going really well or really poorly, there's nothing quite like a dumpster fire to make things worse. So whenever I clean out my kettles or any of my pits, I make sure that they've been out for at least a couple of days to make sure there aren't any burning embers that I end up throwing in the trash and have the possibility of a fire. So I repeated the process where I took a certain amount of ash, I weighed it out, I vacuumed it, and then weighed what was left in the canister when I was done several times because I wanted to get a good average, and the numbers were wildly different, and a big part of that was because it had to coat all the things on the inside. So as it turns out, I was wrong. It wasn't because I was coating the inside of the tube, it was because of this reducer. That was the choke point in the whole system, and a bunch of stuff got stuck right in there, and it didn't make it into the canister. So, figured we might as well get rid of that. And I took an old bike tube that left me stranded and I cut off a piece of it and used that to seal it up instead and it worked much better. So with just a little bit of work and ingenuity, we're going to save a ton of ash from going into our shop vac. And if you're not the DIY kind of person, you can always buy them online. They range from $30 to $40. You can get them at the home improvement store as well.